everybody. This is the Cisco Day with Sirach Lofton. Hello, hello. We are joined by a very special guest, Mr. Derek Tyler Attico, author and photographer. Hi, everybody. Uh, <laughs> you'll never guess. Tyler is now writing or has completed writing the autobiography of Benjamin Sisko, which is scheduled to come out October 10th, 2023. Sounds like pretty much the coolest gig ever. Derek, how are you today? I'm doing well, Ryan. Thank you. And thank you both for, for and, and Melissa for uh, inviting me uh, to this, uh, the first of this auspicious day, the Cisco day, which is fantastic. Thank you for having me. It's good to be mm -hmm. here. Um, yeah, this is, this has been a lot of fun. It's been really challenging. Um, uh, it's, it's, it's just been great to try and bring, um, Benjamin Sisko, his, his life, his, his, his autobiography to, to life in a way that, um, is respectful to the show, the series, what we all remember as fans and something that we would be, um, <laughs> believable and, um, something that would be organic and logical, uh, when read. So I'm really excited for uh, everyone. a little, a, a little, a little nervous, but, but I think more, more, more excitement than nerves, right? Uh, for everyone to uh, to read it, take a look at it, and see what everyone thinks about. It. Yeah, for those of you listening out there, um, first of all, Derek, I'm happy that that a black man is writing this uh, autobiography because that makes a difference for me. Right. Uh, so that that's going to be the first qualifier. I'm like, all right, they got that part right. Right. Um, right. Well, if I can say quick, real quick, I'm not to interrupt yeah. you, but um, I want to give props to Titan Books uh, or Titan Publishing because uh, they could have went with a lot of different and and uh, very qualified authors that know Star Trek um, just as just as well as I do. I'm sure. I'm sure. Um, but they chose to. Uh, Pick someone of color and uh, someone that they thought could bring this whole Cisco story um, to an autobiography. And I think that's great. I think that's great that they had that forethought and were thinking about that. Um, and uh, I remember when I, um, when I, I it was, it was over, over, over Twitter, um, George Sanderson, the managing editor, he reached out to me um, for Titan Books and said he'd like to discuss a project with me. I was like, okay, what's this? You know? And I uh, was talking about the autobiography. And, of Benjamin Sisko, um, you know, and um, uh, about six months to a year prior to that, uh, on Twitter, there was some buzz about my name going around because um, a few people had been listening to a podcast and they were saying, well, the next one, you know, we haven't seen a, a Cisco autobiography. You know, we've seen uh, Kirk Spock, we've seen um, Picard, you know, and was, of course we've seen January, but it felt like, like, Ben somebody got skipped. skipped. Right. Yeah. Somebody got yeah. skipped. So what was going on? And so uh, it, it, what was happening was that they were considering it and thinking about it and figuring out how they wanted to do it. Um, and so then I was I was brought in to have some talks about how they wanted to do it. And they, they explained to me what they wanted to do, their vision for it. And um, to be to be honest, I, I think I'm, if we can say this, is that I, I was like, well, I, have, I don't have the gig yet. So. Let me just be honest. I was like, I, I, I like your idea. I think your idea is great, but I'd rather go this route. And um, when I told him that, and then I told him the route I wanted to go for it, he said, "Oh, it's not a bad idea. It's a pretty good idea." Mm -hmm. So they decided to take that route, um, and it's a route that I think, uh, once everyone reads it, they understand why I asked to make those choices because I'm looking to make choices that I think are. Uh, are beneficial um, to the story, beneficial to the characters, but also will tie directly into uh, to Deep Space Nine. So that if you're a Deep Space Nine fan, you can look at this and be like, oh yeah, I see everything that's going on. If you've never read Deep Space Nine, the way this is written, you could read this and then go back and watch Deep Space Nine. So it translates both, hopefully it will translate both ways. Uh, Derek, what are some of the, um characteristics or character traits of Cisco that um, that you believe helped get you into the mind of, 
of Cisco and also what kind of historical background did you have to add to bring context to the story you're creating? Um, you know, how much of that is, is, is brought in by your uh, creativity? Thank you. That, thank you. That's a great question. That's a phenomenal question. Um, well, I'll take a step back. Um, I'll say that, um, Benjamin Sisko and, and, and Mr. Brooks, Mr. A. Brooks, um, um, and his portrayal of Benjamin Sisko, to me, the, the individuals are synonymous. However, um, um, I don't think anyone else can play Benjamin Sisko. I mean, I, I don't know what's going to happen down the road, but I don't think anyone else can play Benjamin Sisko. I think Avery Brooks closed that door, you know, um, and, and rightly so. And, and um, I, I've always been a fan of Avery Brooks, you know, um, from Hawk and from um, Spencer for Hire, and um, um, I know his love of Paul Robeson, you know, so I knew a lot about this way before, you know, and and so I, and I know about the man. Um, uh, I, saw, I saw him uh, perform Tamberlin on the great um, in DC at the Shakespeare Theater. And so um, he himself was a very powerful individual. I had the pleasure of meeting him once briefly, briefly, briefly at a, at a Holland restaurant. And you know, just certain things just exude off of him. I'm not telling you anything you don't know, but you know, he just has this 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 presence that exudes, you know, off of him. And I never yeah. forgot that. I never forgot that. So to answer your question, um, these are things that that is Avery Brooks, you know. And then you know, my job as a writer is to say, okay, what does Avery Brooks bring into the performance of Benjamin Cisco? Because he sounds different as Cisco. There there is some Avery Brooks in in Ben Cisco, but not. It's not a one-to-one, -one, you know. I, you can't look at any other performance of 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 um, Avery Brooks's and find Benjamin Sisko. Avery Brooks is a particular detailed actor where each character is different. You know, some actors you can go and you can hear a character in if they play other parts, and you can hear that actor, or you can hear those parts. You can't do that with with Avery Brooks, right? So. Mm -hmm. So I can only use Cisco. So that being said, I had to be conscious of that presence and that power. And then I think once you're conscious of that, right, the first thing is family. And it's, it's, almost, it's almost not even the first thing. It's almost like the only thing. You know, it's like the hub and everything revolves around that, right? And, yeah. and that's, that's what he presented. That's what the writers intertwine. That's what the show represented. Because I love Star Trek, but I love Star Trek. But a lot of the space battles and, and all of that—that's great, and that's where we should be. That's what we should be looking at. But it all gets distilled down to people, regular people, and their their, their human and their, hum, their humanity and their human problems, and 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 how they are. How these ordinary people are dealing with extraordinary situations, you know. And one of the things that Benjamin Sisko had and has that no other Starship captain has to date, even now, is at least in my humble opinion, is balance. You know, because you have you have other great captains. You know, I grew up on Kirk. Uh, you have Picard. You have Jane. But these are all great captains. You have Archer. You have Pike. But the only captain that has that family work balance yep. is Benjamin Sisko. So then for me as a writer, I have to say, wow, it's in some ways it's easier, at least for me, just speaking for myself, and, and the way I've written in the past, it's almost easier to write for someone that doesn't have that balance because you can fill in why they don't have the balance. But then when someone has that balance, how do they get that? Right? <laughs> and it all comes back down to family. So then um, I, I don't want to step too much on, on things, but I will say I thought a lot about family. I thought a lot about family. I thought about the genesis of family. I thought about individuals um in the family structure um the men and especially the women in the family structures and the roles that they play 
and how that affects us as children, how that affects us as young adults, how that affects us as men and women, you know, and um, the ramifications of that and what that what that does, you know, positive and negative, you know. Um, and I think I, I do that because I was raised by two strong black women. So I, I know what it is to be raised by a strong black woman. And and uh, in my opinion, you know, it, it, this is this is something that I, I firmly believe goes beyond race. You look at a, any strong man in history or any leader in history, at some point in their life was a woman, whether it was their mother that birthed them and brought them into this world or or a companion or somebody else. Well, there's always a woman in, in leaders in their history and in their own personal lives that helped them to get where they were, you know? So these are things that I thought about and wanted to bring to light. Um, and in Ben's history, I think you can't look at Ben Sisko, you know, and, and see and, and look at him and say, well, okay, he didn't just, he just wasn't this Im immediate strong uh, character um, from the start. How did this happen? Um, a lot of the, People he works with, he works with a lot of women. You know, his first officer is a is a woman. You know, Kira Nui, some, mm -hmm. you know, Cassidy Sisko, uh, Cassie Yates Sisko. I mean, you know, this is a this is a, these are themes that I pay attention to. Um, so you know, if I'm paying attention to them, I have to kind of show the reader where this comes from. Hey Derek, uh, can I ask you when we're talking about? an autobiography, our initial impression is that means uh, this will be in the voice mm -hmm. of Captain Sisko, mm -hmm. of course, Benj Benjamin Lafayette Sisko. Uh, but beyond that, we assume, rightly or wrongly, that this is his entire life. This covers his entire life. Uh, mm -hmm. As such, can you say whether there's a starting point? Is the starting point his earliest memories? And as importantly, is there an ending point and where that is? If you know what I'm saying there. Oh, I know what you're saying, <laughs> I know what you're saying. And there's a great, that's a great question. Um, uh, it's a true autobiography. It's Benjamin Sisko and his voice. I'll say, I, I think uh, to say much more, I'll start to, encroach on things. But I, I wanted to make sure it was a true uh, autobiography. Um, I know another avenue to go was to have um, a story written by Jake, which is great, which is a great idea. That's next. But, right, and that would be, that'd be, right, that could be next, that would be great. But I felt the importance, um, um, and you know, it even makes a certain level of sense to have a story written by Jake because, you know, at the last episode um, of Deep Space Nine, Ben contacts uh, Cassidy. He never really talks to Jake after he goes into the wormhole, you know? And I'm, I'm not saying anything that, you know, no one here doesn't know, but Jake is left looking out and he never really speaks to his father um, post that post him going into the wormhole. So mm -hmm. writing the story from Jake's perspective makes sense. However, I think, um, um, you know, Titan has done some really great autobiographies. They've all been in the voice of, of captains. Uh, and I didn't want to break that continuity. I, I figured out a way not to, you know, and I wanted it to be, I also wanted it to be in Benjamin Sisko's um, voice, because you know we want to hear what he has to say about about a lot of different things. Um, Derek, I want to ask you. You know, in the black community, the the most famous or one of the most famous, if not the most uh, beloved autobiography, is the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yes, it is. Uh, That's right. Right by Alex right. Haley. And so we. Everybody, you know, in our community, when you start the words autobiography, that's the first <laughs> thing that literally jumps in our head. And so, and just to kind of extrapolate from that, from that book, you know, we see Malcolm X's journey from being, uh, you know, involved in the streets to his maturity and kind of growth through 
uh, his exposure to Islam. Mm -hmm. And my my question is, um, in this autobiography, are we seeing um, a similar kind of transformation by Cisco's exposure, let's say, to the Bajoran uh, faith and his uh, being the emissary? Um, do we see similar kinds of um, transformation in his thought process um, from your perspective? Uh, that's another great question. I don't know how much I can answer about that question, sir. Okay. I'll be honest with you. I will tell you that I, I read the autobiography of, uh, of Malcolm X. It's, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. uh, I reread it. One of the things I did, um, uh, for this particular work, I try and, I try and do research, you know, and, um, I've never written a biography of any sort uh, before. So I read a lot of them, but I, thankfully I read biographies, autobiographies are um, on my own. So I went to some of the ones that I liked and I read in the past. Um, Sidney Poitier, uh, uh, Michael J. Fox has a really good one. Um, uh, Michelle Obama is really, really good. And I just, you know, thought about the, these people's lives and what they're trying to express in their lives. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously this is not a, a, a actual, you know, individual, this is a fictional character, but I want to address it in the same, in the same way, you know? Um, and uh, when I created the outline for it, um, I just looked at everything and I said, okay, this is where I wanted to start. This is where I, 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 where I wanted to end. And uh, uh, the outline took me a while to do um, because it's not this 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 was a a, a monster of a, of a project um, because you're creating someone's life you know and 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 in the black community a lot of you know sometimes people think that I think sometimes people think that there are persons of color that don't watch or aren't gravitated towards Star Trek but that's not the case there are a lot of people of color that watch Star Trek and love Star Trek just as much as, as everyone else. Um, and and on top of everything, I think my job and 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 one of the hurdles I have is that I want a person of color to read this and find themselves in it. I want a person that's not of color to read this and find themselves in it, you know? And so it has to be Deep Space Nine was almost all things for everyone. It it, it wasn't seen as that at first. You know, but then people were like, oh, I see what's going I see what they're doing after 10, 15 years, 20 years. Oh, yeah, I see what they were doing. And people gravitated to Deep Space Nine from all walks of life, all socioeconomic backgrounds, all, all creeds, all colors, right? So this has, as a reflection of that, needs to do that as well. It needs to be, you know, anyone could pick this up and see something about um, themselves or, or think that they understand and find themselves in it. Um, and it also, on top of all that, and of course it is, the reason that we're even talking about it is because it's Star Trek. So we have a 56, 57 year institution and canon, and it all has to also fold into that and it has to be familiar to people and give them comfort that when they're reading it, they're like, oh yeah, I, I know that thing that, that, that's, that is in this, on this page, you know? So, so I can tell you that any series of Star Trek, um, no matter what series you like, you'll find something in this autobiography. And no matter you know what color, what what gender, um, um, or however you, however you identify, um, you can find something in this to relate to. Yeah, it seems like yeah. Uh, sorry, go ahead, Sarah. No, go ahead. Um, I was going to say it seems like one of the most difficult things uh, in writing an autobiography and also probably the most fun thing is you're not just writing Cisco's story, you're writing Cisco's story in his voice. And the fans, <laughs> I'm sure, will immediately recognize or nitpick to death that yes. voice. And yes. so my question to you, sound, you're laughing because I know that this is something, this is very present in, in every page that you're writing and every decision that you're making. But what 
What prepared you for this? Were there particular episodes? Did you just watch every single episode five times over and you're like, I got it. I know this guy backwards and forwards. What was it that really, was there something that that put you in that mindset? Uh, That's a great question, Ryan. Uh, A few things. One is I'll say, thankfully, um, I've already written two short Star Trek short stories um, uh, for the Star Trek Strange New Worlds anthology series. Um, One was in 2005. Uh, which was Alpha and Omega, which dealt primarily with the uh, Next Gen crew um, and the Borg, actually, funny enough. And then um, in 2016, for the 50th anniversary, um, um, oh, and Strange New Worlds was a contest. That's how I got into all this. It's a contest. And and that was my first story I ever wrote professionally. A friend of mine was like, oh, they're doing this thing. I should write for it. So I started doing research and I, I wrote the story. Uh, and I t- it took um, my Alpha and Omega story took first place, which I was really, very honored and thankful that it did. 2016, I, uh, they were bringing back the Strange New Worlds um, anthology that had been discontinued. And so I submitted a story, and that was The Dreamer in the Dream, which was a DS9 story with Benny Russell. And that um, was also um, in, in the anthology. Um, so I've been doing this for a while. Um, I have at this point like an encyclopedic knowledge of, of Trek. But that being said, you still got to watch it all the time. You know, you still have to stay on top of it and watch it all the time. Um, and to get Cisco's voice, you know, um, I, I did a lot of things. I have a lot of tricks and stuff. I, as I was telling Ciroc, you know, at first I was like, oh, well, let me try and watch other things uh, that Mr. Brooks has done mm-hmm. to get his mannerisms and stuff. And the first day I started trying to do that, I'm like, oh man, this guy, this gentleman is such a, a great actor. He's not duplicating himself, you know? So as a writer trying to find Cisco in maybe elements of Hawk, you know, a younger Cisco, or can't do it, because he's just not, he's bringing something new. And it was like, wow. Or, or, or in one way, there was an incredible amount of respect. But other way, I was bummed because I usually, what I do is I, I have this thing that I do that I try and pull from other places. Um, I, I'm, I'm not an actor at all, but I, I've taken acting classes. I understand sense memory. Uh, um, and, and so I understand certain methods of acting. And so I try and pull from different places in, in my writing. And so I couldn't do that. I, those, things, those kind of av- avenues were cut off to me. And um, I had to just watch <laughs> Deep Space Nine. And so then what starts to happen is you start to look for things that you just never saw before, you know? And, and after a while, you start to see things. I start to look at the actor and what he's doing. And um, there's a lot happening in, in his pauses. There's a lot happening in the time he's taking between sentences, you know? I will say, I think the closest episode that is closest to, to Avery Brooks and where Avery Brooks is playing, Ben Sisko, but elements of, of Avery Brooks is seeping in is in the pale moonlight. There were times when he's given those monologues that you start to hear the same intonation and tones of Avery Brooks, you know? But normally, Mr. Brooks is doing something that's a little bit more, I don't want to say, it's almost like cleaner and more straight and narrow when he's doing Cisco. And, and, and everyone says that Mr. Brooks is that is that jazz musician. And I think when you listen to him speak, he's doing a lot of that, but that's not Ben Cisco. So he's really, he really created a different uh, character that was really hard for me to, to uh, at least in the beginning, it was hard for me to write. But I knew I had the character. Um, and I, and I, had, I had written him in 2016 in the short story. But this was different because, you know, you're talking, you know, full, full, blown autobiography, but I knew I had the character uh, when I'm like in the middle of, literally the middle of what would be the manuscript, and I'm watching an episode, and I'm like, oh, wait a minute, that just sounds just like what I wrote. You know, that's the same rhythms, you know? And so I'm like, really? And then I go back and I start, so, oh yeah, that's the same rhythms, those are rhythms. And then, um, I can say that I, I can say that even that I started to think about, you know, what we see 
in season one, episode one, emissary, that's what we see, and that's what we're presented with by Mr. Brooks. That's the Francisco we're presented with. But to get that voice, to get that strength, no one sounds like that from day one. None of us do, right? So if I really want to be true to this, then it means he wouldn't sound like that as a kid. He wouldn't mm-hmm. sound like that as a teenager. You know what I'm saying? He, he wouldn't, it's just, he has to get there. So, um, you know, that's challenging to get him there, you know? Um, uh, so that by the time he gets there, he's there. And you're like, oh yeah, okay, now I, I, I hear it. And I hear elements of it before, but now I hear it through it. Am I making any sense? Am I? Sounds really fun. Yeah. 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 It's really trying does. to find that voice. And it's, it's, it's very difficult to find because it's, it's so unique and so one of a kind. It's only it's... Avery. I've, I've met millions of people and nobody's like Avery Brooks. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody. Can't be duplicated. It... Can't be can't. duplicated. Can't be. And there was no cheats. I couldn't take any cheats. I couldn't take any shortcuts. So, no. uh, you know, and I'm always constantly, because then, you know, you go over the manuscript and you're like, okay, the manuscript works for this or works for that, but does it work for the voice? Is the voice there? Is this there? Um, is, is the places where I came from, is that, is that, does that make sense? You know, those kind of things, you know? Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what people are think about those choices that I made. Uh, do you go at all into um, two things, Joseph Sisko and or and Benny Russell? I'll say, uh, I'll say, uh, I'll say. Um, <laughs> there's no way there's no uh, Joseph Sisko in there in his autobiography. There's got to be some Joseph Sisko. <laughs> yeah. I'll say this autobiography is a is a, a very good reflection of the series. And the series was a reflection of, um, you know, all these things happened in the series, but it always kept coming back to family. Mm-hmm. So um, I think you can expect that to, 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 you can expect that for sure. Um, I'm paying a, t- a lot of attention to that, a lot of attention to that. Um, oh man, there's so much, you guys have to come, have to ask me back because there's so much stuff that I yeah no we have to ask like. after the book's been released and we read it because I know that there's Jennifer's in there I got questions about everything oh man uh, right? there's just so much stuff um, but no I'm glad that you took on this this project um, and I'm glad that it's in the hands of somebody who's giving this much thought into it because it, it requires this much of thinking when you're you know trying to get it right. Right. Um, in such a dynamic character as Cisco, um, it is unique. And, um, you know, we, we always talk about what it means for black people, but it actually, in, in, in I think you um, elaborated on this, it transcends color. It really becomes more just about family. And I know it, it means a lot for the black families that have, you know, seen themselves facing all kinds of struggle to keep the units together and to keep the structure. But it also just means for all family, because everybody has to grow up in a household mm-hmm. with some kind of parental figure in their life. And, and they, this, this this is what it means. This is what personal relationships are all about. Mm-hmm. Um, and the people that have reached out to me during the course of my lifetime have been of all colors and all creeds. And they all say the same thing that, you know, watching that reminded me of my, you know, my childhood or my relationship with my father. Right. And, and that transcends color. It's not just black people that tell me that. That's everybody. Right. We, we all have, you know, um, family. You know, um, there are families that we are born into. There are families that we choose. But we all have family. And, and um, that's important. Um, I... I I think, in, in all honesty, if it if it was written just to uh, cater or or to one group of people, that'd be an injustice because that's not what um, Deep Space Nine did, and that's not what Star Trek does. Mm-hmm. Star Trek says we're all stronger together, you know, and and so uh, this autobiography has to reflect that and it has to show that. Um, I, I will say 
that um, another another hard factor, uh, which is really difficult for me, was that um, I, I'm a firm believer in canon, um, especially Star Trek canon. I'm a very, very firm believer in adhering to it and meeting it and everything. And so in canon, um, Ben talks about his um, sister Judith and his two younger brothers. We never see them. Nice. So I was but like, we're gonna hear oh. about them. Yeah, already. <laughs> yeah, that right. wet my appetite already. Yeah. <laughs> I, didn't even, I don't even remember about my aunties and uncles. <laughs> right, right. So, so these are things that I was like, oh man. So, you know, who are they? Why, why do we not see them? I mean, we probably just don't see them just because they didn't have time. It was a show. But in story, right? In the story, why don't we see them? Well, that's yeah, where yeah. your that's where your creative that's where you're bridging exactly. the, the gap on exactly. the creativity aspect, mm -hmm. and you're lending exactly. that perspective and say, "Oh, I'll fill in the blank over here." I'll fill in the blanks, right, 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 exactly. You know, and then at the same time, I've also tried to bring um, a few things uh, that are very Star Trek and very different to this. Um, so people would be like, oh wow, I didn't, oh that, that's that's different. That's I didn't see that coming, you know, oh, that's different. And so hopefully it'll have, like I said, everything for a lot of different things for 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 everyone. Hopefully. Mm -hmm. yeah. Soraka, you'll wow. remember Jake's Auntie Judith was the one that would send him five dollar bills on his birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was the one. With the Worthers. She had the Worthers. <laughs> With the right. Worthers right. original. Right, right, <laughs> right. right. Uh, right. Hey, Derek, you teased before we hit record that you had a couple funny stories about the seventh rule. Uh, yes. Um, are they uh, are they PG-13, first of all? <laughs> okay. Can we yes. hear them then? <laughs> yes. So um, I, do, I try and do a lot of research. And so uh, one of the things... Well, one of the things I was doing was I was I was just looking for uh, I was like well I, I like looking at at, at um, I'm really a big fan of inside the actor studio um, because uh, during those conversations you know actors talk about their method and what they were thinking about you know characters and stuff like that and so I was like I was wondering I was like oh man you know I started I had already looked at pretty much every interview I'd ever on YouTube there was of of Mr Brooks. And then I was like, well, what else is there? And then there was like this thing called the seventh rule. I'm like, what's this? And so I started watching it. And I swear to you, I swear to you, I was about, this was a day, this was like a writing day. And I was like two hours in. I'm like, oh man, I can't stop listening to this. This is, this is great. But it was, it was, it was like the first season. I started, of course, with the first season, first mm -hmm. episode. Um, and uh, it was just great. And, you know, I, uh, Lisa Rock, Aaron, and Aaron is just digging into stuff. You know, he is like <laughs> yeah. hungry. You know, yeah. And and and, uh, and I was like, wow, um, this is great stuff. Um, it was, and so after a while, I would listen every now and then. But I realized it, it wasn't so much. It wasn't so much helping me. Um, but there were times that I would listen. And I would hear things that I was doing, and I was like, "Oh wow, that's good to that's a great affirmation, you know, because um another thing is that being a writer for a project like this, you know, you sign an NDA, and I was like walled, walled off because I can't speak to anybody, and i I usually like bounce a lot of things around with other friends of mine that are other writers and and even other people in, in, in Trek, um, but I'm walled off. So it was interesting to, 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 to do something and then like a month later, I'll be listening to a similar film episode. I'll be like, oh, huh, okay. That's good to know, check that one off, you know? And, and so it was kind of like, you guys were there um, in a way, it was like, it's like an affirmation that was on the right track for some things. Hopefully that's, that's, that's the case. Um, the, the other story, is a really great story. Um, it was it was back. This is back way before some of the or anything, and it was on Facebook. And uh, I don't know when this was two thousand early two thousands. Wow. Um, 
And, you know, Facebook had like Facebook Messenger. I think Facebook Messenger was kind of newish, like a year or two. And um, Aaron was on Facebook Messenger. And I had, you know, um, I had uh, everyone that I liked, you know, I was like, sure, I'll, you know. And one day I saw that Aaron was on. For some reason, I just messaged him. And I was like, hey, I love your work. You know, um, I love your work. Uh, this space line is great. Um, I have an artificial, I, I personally have an artificial hip. So seeing, um, you mm-hmm. know, the, the, the episode he did, you know, um, and some of the work he did. And I was like, and that was it. And not five minutes later, um, does he not message me back? And it was about 15, 20 minutes of us going back and forth, you know? And and I never forgot that. I never forgot that. Um and and I think it just speaks to uh the individual that he that he um was and is, you know. Um and and, and I can say that that none of that is lost on me um in writing in writing this. You know, none of that is lost in me. So all of that, all of those emotions, all of those feelings, everything that 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 um as a as a fan, I have to put that aside when I'm writing, but I am I am aware of what other people are thinking and feeling and trying to always um not give them necessarily everything they want, but sometimes you know, touch some of those things that I know that they would like to hear and see. Wow. Yeah, when you're right, uh, when you were writing this piece, did you ever find yourself crumpling up a piece of paper and saying, "Nah, this is good way"? I, I, there were times. I'm not to say there were times that I would, I would just, be, I would just erase whole uh, pages. Yeah. And see times I'm just like, because if it didn't work, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work, you know. And I'm not, I'm not one that thinks that uh, what he writes is gold or great you know if it's not working you got to be honest with yourself and 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 be honest to the piece i think what's more important is and this is what this is the first conversation that that um my editor george and i had is our first commitment we both agreed was to be true to the piece you know and it's like uh, if it's not true to that then why am i doing it or why am i saying it you know, so there were times that there were things that I was like, no, that's not exactly right. It's been said differently or better or certain things, you know. Um, but I'm always thinking about things, uh, not necessarily from the fans' point of view. I'm always thinking about things from Benjamin Sisko's point of view. And Benjamin Sisko's point of view is not necessarily the point of view that we may all have on everything you know he we may have an overview of the space nine but my job is to look at benjamin cisco and what he thinks about specific things and um, people may agree with that people may not agree with that but it's what what i believe is his view on on certain things and i and I, I i've i've um had some time with star trek I, i've i've interviewed people for for star trek magazine and Stuff like that, and I, and I think mm-hmm. we are, we are all very emotional when it comes to Star Trek, you know, because we've seen it. I, you guys, it's been in it, but but I think people that watch it on television, they, everyone. I I remember I went to the 50th anniversary at, at um, um, Star Trek New York, and I interviewed all these people. And I would just walk up to people to interview them for the magazine, and everyone had a story about oh, I watched it with my dad, I I watched it with my mom, you know, um. um I watched it after I was disabled, so you know, when I had a disability, and and so we identify certain things. My job as a as an author, as a writer, is to kind of separate that and say, well, what are the other writers? What is Iris even there? What, well, you know, what are all these other writers of the space nine? What are they putting into those characters, and what are they presenting? And then how am I taking that forward? Not my own personal things, you know. Mm-hmm. Put a little bit of Derek in there, but pay more attention to what has come before and follow that thread forward because then I think I'm, I'm, I'm extending and creating the character that is the one that we all know and love, I think. Derek, we only have you for a couple more minutes here and we really appreciate you taking the time, by the way. Um, yeah. But that kind of what you just said led me into uh, my next question, which is, 
what do Star Trek and Benjamin Sisko mean to you? Uh, a lot of things, man. Um, a lot of things. I remember, uh, well, I started off with Kirk and uh, my, my, my mom and dad uh, uh, started me off. This is what have Star Trek on, so I could have watched it. Um, and I loved Kirk and everything like that. Um, I, I was kind of into next gen, but then I didn't really like it that much. I I found a renewed appreciation for next gen when I wrote the 2005 story. I did a lot of research watching the old episodes. Um, my fondest memory of Deep Space Nine is the first episode, Emerson, and and watching that first episode when it first aired um, blew me away. It blew me away. Um, the emotion. The depth, the first three four minutes of the show, yeah, is we have you know the, the board, the man loses his wife, he loses everything in like four minutes, man, and he plays it, and 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 to this day I remember him, you know, he's in the uh, he's in the Saratoga escape shuttle, and and you see the reflection of the Saratoga exploding, and you see his face, and you know it's all this pain, it's everything, and I was like. This is like nothing I've ever seen before. I never expected Star Trek to do this. And this is where we're going. This is where we're starting. So for me, I was really um, excited and, and invigorated. And then towards the end of that same episode, the writers chose to use baseball to explain linear time to aliens. And if that ain't dope, I don't know what is. <laughs> and, and, and it always struck me that, you know, Star Trek for me has always been in, in many ways a teaching tool. You know, um, um, I, I've, I, I've never gone to, to school for writing or anything like that. You know, um, I've taken writing classes. Um, I've taken some, some, some really good people. I've, I've, I've done a heck of a lot of reading. Um, I'm very thankful um, for the ability I have. But, but in a lot of ways, Star Trek taught me, I always took apart what was happening and learned how to write certain things from episodes I would watch, you know? And it, it would challenge me. It would always, Star Trek always challenged me as a, as a writer um, to, 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 push, to push boundaries. And so now I can kind of do that in this, hopefully in this, in this autobiography. Does that answer your question, hopefully? I think so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, no, that, that's that's awesome. I'm I'm glad that you're doing it, Derek. Uh, I have more questions too, but I I don't want to ask you questions that are reveal the contents <laughs> of the book. And pretty much that's where my questions are at this moment. Right. I got to read sure. the tape. We'll, be, sure, we'll have sure. them back in October. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> to be yeah. continued. To be yeah. Continued. Well, yes, well, definitely. Derek, this has been so much fun. We really appreciate you taking the time for the inaugural, the Cisco Day. Uh, yes. It's not easy to put yourself in the headspace of the emissary, but you did it. And uh, we're all looking forward to it. Everybody, again, that is October 10th, 2023. Theoretically, unless something changes, that's when it's going to become available on uh, hardcover, on Amazon, as well as on Kindle. That's right. I never had a Kindle. I don't know. Anyway. I don't know how many people have. Everybody let us know in the comments <laughs> below. Have you had a Kindle? And there was another one too that's kind of like that. But anyway, um, thanks very much, Derek. This has been really great. We hope to see you again real soon. Gentlemen, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, I know this is going to be a fantastic day to Cisco Day. Um, it's been a pleasure um, working on and writing this little bar. So thank you very much. I feel it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And everybody at home, thank you for joining us. Let us know in the comments below your plans. Are you going to get, this is October 10th, are you going to get it on hardback or on Kindle? Let us know. It's one or the other, period. We'll see you all soon. 